Once upon a time, there was a boy who had an insatiable passion for catching bugs. He would spend hours searching and exploring in order to find the rarest of creatures, but he soon realized that his obsession wasn't just limited to entomology. This same boy who had a vision to create his own universe of creatures, a place where he could explore and collect them all, he wanted to make it real. But there was just one problem. How? Little did this boy know that his dream would become the biggest video game franchise in history, Pokemon. But before it became an international phenomenon, it almost didn't exist at all due to a surprise twist of fate. Let's take a look at the amazing journey of how Pokemon was made. Chapter 1 – The Beginning the story of Pokemon began in 1965, when Satoshi Tajiri, the young entomologist, was born in Machida, Japan. As a child, Satoshi would explore the nearby forests and streams to catch bugs, a hobby that his friends thought of as strange. Little did they know that it would become the foundation for one of the biggest gaming franchises in history. Satoshi was a big fan of gaming, and he would spend all his free time at the local arcades. He was particularly fascinated by the advancements in technology that enabled more realistic games on newer machines. With each new game, Satoshi became inspired to create something unique and special himself. This passion eventually led him to start a gaming magazine with his friends named Game Freak in 1982. It was here where Satoshi met Ken Sujimori, who would become the illustrator of Pokemon and a lifelong friend. As they worked on their magazine, Satoshi kept developing his idea for a new game, one that featured creatures he himself had caught as a kid. Satoshi decided to approach Nintendo. Yes, the same Nintendo that created Mario and Zelda. He presented them with the idea, a game that lets players explore, collect, and battle their own creatures. But they weren't impressed. They felt it was too ambitious and didn't have enough appeal for gamers. But Satoshi wouldn't give up on his dream. After being rejected, he started to work on what would become Pokemon. He worked long hours, often over 18 to 20 hours a day, to make it happen. But he was determined and eventually convinced Nintendo to give his game a chance. Nintendo assigned Satoshi to work with legendary game maker Shigeru Miyamoto, the man behind Mario and The Legend of Zelda. Together they worked on making Satoshi's dream a reality, spending six years creating pocket monsters. On the 27th of February 1996, Pocket Monsters was released in a green and red version for the Game Boy. Players could capture, train, evolve, and battle creatures they encountered while exploring the game world. And with a cable to connect two Game Boys together, players were able to trade their Pokémon too. The games were an instant success. People everywhere became obsessed with catching and collecting Pokémon. Nintendo quickly realized the potential of this new franchise and decided to release a third version, Pocket Monsters Blue. Not only was the name changed to Pokemon, but they also released the game in English-speaking countries as Pokemon Red and Blue in 1998. It sold millions of copies and became one of the most beloved games ever made. In the following years, seven more generations of Pokemon were released. From Gold and Silver to Ruby and Sapphire, Diamond and Pearl, Black and White, X and Y, Sun and Moon, and most recently, Sword and Shield. With each new generation, more Pokémon join the games. In fact, there are now around 898 different species of Pokémon. And did you know, there are 8 different regions to explore in the Pokémon world, each with its own unique type of Pokémon and culture. Chapter 2 – From Trading Card Games to Pokémon Series and Movies Launch It wasn't long before Pokémon became a global sensation. The original games were popular, but there was something else the fans wanted. Trading cards. The success of the first games led to another idea, creating a physical version of Pokémon. In October 1996, Media Factory released the first set of cards for the Pokémon trading card game. It had 102 cards with artwork by Ken Sujimori and Mitsuhiro Arita. Players could play this game with two or more people, each using their own deck of cards to battle and trade Pokémon. The objective was to win a six-prize card match by knocking out all of your opponent's prize cards. These cards quickly became popular in Japan, 
and three years later, they were released in North America by Wizards of the Coast. Soon after, other countries around the world started to get their hands on Pokemon cards, too. The Pokemon trading card game became an international sensation. People everywhere were now able to collect and battle with physical Pokemon cards. It was the perfect way for people who loved the games to bring their passion outside of the virtual world. And beyond anyone's imagination, the most expensive single Pokemon card to sell at auction was a first edition holographic shadowless Charizard card which sold for a whopping $369,000, or around 262,000 pounds in 2020. Well, the success of the trading card game wasn't just limited to cards. The franchise became so popular that it spawned an animated TV series and many movies. The Pokemon anime first aired in Japan in 1997, with a brand new take on Ash Ketchum's story. It followed Ash as he set off on his journey to become a Pokemon master alongside his beloved Pikachu. Ever since then, there has been 23 series and over 1,000 episodes of the show. The anime has become iconic around the world, introducing fans to new characters and Pokemon as Ash explores different regions. But that's not all. In 1998, the first Pokemon movie was released in Japan. It follows Ash and his friends as they try to stop the powerful Mewtwo from wreaking havoc. The movie was a huge success and was released worldwide in 1999. Since then, there has been another 23 movies featuring characters from the show and introducing new Pokemon, some of which appeared for the first time ever in those movies. And you know what? The latest movie, Pokemon the Movie Secrets of the Jungle, released in December 2020, became the highest grossing Pokemon movie of all time. Chapter 3 launch of Pokemon Go. Let's go outside. But the story of Pokemon doesn't end there. In 2016, a game called Pokemon Go was released for mobile devices, and it changed everything. Literally. The game used augmented reality technology to make it seem like the Pokemon were all around us in the real world. Players could now explore their neighborhood looking for virtual monsters. It was the perfect way for people to reconnect with each other while exploring their city and hunting down Pokemon. Pokemon Go became an instant success. It smashed download records around the world and has since been downloaded more than a billion times. A year later, the game was released on Apple Watch, and it was now even easier to play. Just two years after Pokemon Go launched, Nintendo released remakes of the original games. Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow, as Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu for the Nintendo Switch. The game incorporated elements from Pokemon Go, such as using the Switch controllers to throw Pokeballs and using a special Pokeball controller to take your Pokemon for walks. The game was an instant success, breaking records in its first week of release. This sparked a whole new wave of remakes, with Pokemon Snap that was released in 2021. Pokemon Snap was a revolutionary game in its own right, allowing players to explore photogenic landscapes while discovering and photographing wild Pokemon and interacting with them. The game follows a familiar formula as players take on the role of a photojournalist, traveling through diverse locations such as beaches and jungles to take pictures of wild Pokemon. Unlike other Pokemon games, players don't battle wild Pokemon. Instead, they must use various items to encourage them to pose for pictures. Pokemon Snap has been highly praised by fans and critics alike, with many hailing it as the perfect blend of classic Pokemon gameplay and modern technology. With the success of Pokemon Go, Let's Go Games, and the latest movie, it looks like Pokemon is here to stay. But what does the future hold for this beloved franchise? One thing is for sure, there are going to be plenty more games and movies in the years to come. New regions, new characters, and new Pokemon are just around the corner. We can also expect to see continued innovation as Nintendo continues to explore different ways of playing with their beloved monsters. But it's not just the games that are growing. The Pokemon fandom is also reaching new heights. There's more fan-made art, cosplays, and merchandise than ever before. It looks like there's plenty to look forward to for fans of the franchise. So it looks like Pokemon isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Whether you've been a fan since 1998 or just recently got into the series, there's something for everyone in this ever-evolving franchise. And we can't wait to see what the future holds.